called joy he shall reign and i've always heard just as you probably have as well that the, the word joy could just simply be spelled out jesus first others second and yourself third and i think that uh, really when you want to have joy at christmas time it can't come from all the gifts it can't come from the parties or the food all those things are great but you really want to have some joy at christmas time it starts and it ends with knowing Jesus and him in your life. And he can really bring the true joy that we celebrate tonight. So I hope that you'll sit back and if you know what song, sing along with us. But worship with us tonight. You guys going to hit those lights, right? Yeah, yeah y'all go ahead and do that. Thank you. And uh, sit back and enjoy it tonight as we present this and be blessed tonight. Thank you. Rejoice, our King is here. Men of earth and angels cheer. Oh, glory right before our eyes. His majesty in a manger lies. Oh, joy to the world, to the world. The Lord is come. Joy to the world, to the world. God said, Shepherds bowing down. Oh, the wise men offer him their crowns. Oh, from then to now and far beyond, we stand to join in the endless song.
expected Jesus, one to set thy people free from our fears and sins release us. Let us find our rest in thee. We are watching, we are waiting, longing for the promised day.
God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, who was a descendant of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end.
An angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins.
So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them.
shepherds hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what was said to them. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had seen and heard. Some call you heaven's child, Mary's son. Some call you prince of peace, the long-awaited one. Some say deliverer, 
the King of kings, but we gather now and call you holy. Receive the praises. 
Halleluja. Halleluja. Amen. That's so good. That's so good. I won't tell you, preacher, that you were raising hand, your hands if you were a Baptist and you were in here tonight. I don't even know who was on my backs to you. But I think you can just get excited to worship from that song tonight. Uh, somebody in the choir uh, texted me a few weeks ago, and they said, um, I'm loving this song. And I said, I am too. Um, and, and I was out here at the church, and I left and went home. And I was riding home. I just said, let me put it on that song. I put it on that song, Brother Darrell, and I thought I was going to leave the truck there for a minute. Uh, you know, it was good. It was good. And I'm Baptist through and through, but I got a little excited myself. Guys, as I said earlier, if there's one word I think we could use to describe God, we, we can't describe him in one word, but the closest word I think would be holy because he is a holy God. The scripture says that, that he is holy. And uh, every person in the Bible, as Brother Darrell said so many times, and I totally agree with him, every person in the Bible that's ever had an encounter with God, they fell before him. They didn't come to him and say, hey, there's my buddy, the Lord Jesus and, and God. And, and, and a lot of people think of God that way, the granddaddy in the sky. And, oh, he just, oh, he's so good to me and I, I love him. He's good. And all oh, that might be true. But guys, he is the God of this universe that created everything. He created you. He created me. He gave you breath. He gave you life. And without him, you wouldn't be here tonight. None of us would be. And all of us like to think we can pull ourselves up. We can do our own thing. But guys... If you want to enter into the presence of God one day, it won't be because anything that you did that was good enough. Right. Ms. Sylvia shared this morning talking about her father that passed away that she said, I, I, you know, she, and hope, I hope she doesn't mind me saying this, but she said, I, you know, I don't know for sure because I didn't see the fruits of that. But she was just talking about how he talked about it. And we have family members the same way that will say, I'm a good person. I've lived a pretty good life. Shouldn't that count for enough? Folks, I can tell you with assurance, the Bible says no. It's not. I'm not good enough. You're not good enough. Brother Darrell's not good enough. If you took everybody in this room and put our good deeds together, it wouldn't be enough to save one person. You say, how is that true? Because that's what the Bible tells us. Guys, it's not up to us. It's not up to preachers to decide what they want to say, and some do. But preachers like Brother Paul and Brother Darrell and others in the room, Brother Steve, they, when they preach what the word says and when you hear it you really see what the word of God says it says that there's no other way to come to God but through his son Jesus Christ to enter into his holiness so if you're here tonight and you say hey I, you know I know what Christmas is about I know it's about Jesus and if I were to leave this earth tonight I want to go to heaven well you can know that that's the good thing the Bible tells us that we can know it because of what Jesus did on the cross we think about the manger just as we see that picture up there and it's, it's beautiful and it's wonderful. But guys, Jesus came to earth knowing ahead of time that he was going to come to earth and be born as a baby. But he was going to live a life for 33 years. And at the end of those 33 years, he would have to die on the cross. Don't think God just tricked him and sent him down here and said, son, go on down there. Jesus is God. He knows everything, right? He knew that when he came here. But yet he still came to earth knowing that he would have to die on a cross because that's the only way you and I could be saved. Because our works aren't good enough. We can't be holy in ourselves. But tonight, you can become holy in his sight. One day, stand before him and bow before him in his presence. And he'll say, well done, my faithful servant. Enter in because of what you do with Jesus. So tonight, as you bow your heads, I'm just going to ask Miss Kim if you'll just play something just for a minute. And uh, nobody's looking around. I'm going to ask Brother Darrell to come to the front. And uh, Brother Darrell, if you come up here and... Some of you in the room might need to come and just pray tonight. You might need to come and say, hey, I've not really been living like I should, and I know that. I feel convicted. I need to come tonight and settle things with God. You might need to come tonight and pray for a loved one that you know is lost and is not living like they should. Nobody's looking around tonight. You can come. But most of all tonight, if you're here and you say, there's not been a time in my life that I've asked Jesus to come into my heart and save me and forgive me my sins be the Lord of my life tonight you can do that without walking out of here without worrying about it again you can come tonight and take Brother Darrell he'll be glad to walk through that with you and tell you how to be saved tonight so I'm just going to be quiet for a minute and allow you to pray where you're at and if God's speaking to your heart tonight don't delay come tonight and do business with God whatever he's telling you
Thank you. We're so glad you came tonight. We have one more song, and I hope that it will bless your heart before we end tonight. <laughs> so much. I hope you give God the praise. Be seated just for a second. We'll get you out of here. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I had to do that.
I hate to tell you this, but in the last year, there have been several Sunday mornings, and it wasn't uh, special days. It was just several Sunday mornings when the crowd uh, gave them a standing ovation just because of what they did on a regular Sunday morning. I am so blessed to be able to come here and preach behind all this. Glory! We love you, brother. We love you, and I thank God for you. And I trust that y'all are going to let them know that you love them as you leave. Just thank them or whatever. And uh, we have been so blessed around here. And I don't know. I, I, I really can't answer the why, but I do know the what. And that is God Almighty has been pouring out wonderful blessings. And I, I got to tell you, there's no doubt in my mind, 21 years ago, part of it was when Ansley Hickox looked in the Baxley banner and saw the name Daryl Quinn. And she thought, I knew a Daryl Quinn, but he was a nut. <laughs> and now what you said, Ansley? And she said, we go see if that's that same nut. And they came and they've been here ever since. You bless me, brother. You bless me. All of y'all do. All of you do. I thank you. Thank you for coming to be willing to support Jonathan and uh, what he does. I trust you'll understand, though, in all of the sharing of the thanksgivings and all that, you go to hell tonight, it's your fault. I said it, it's your fault. You've heard the gospel. Jesus Christ is the answer. He is the way. He came born a baby in a manger, but he grew up to be our savior. And there is no other way. I don't care what them nuts in the rest of the world say. It's Jesus Christ, the only way you've heard that you've heard that you've seen it rejoiced and praised now you make sure you do what you need to do don't don't you dare go to a lake of fire without realizing you could have got saved you could have it's your call thank you jonathan for all you do for us brother we love you, you gonna play anything else you gonna sing anything else you ain't i think you ought to but that's just my opinion Let's bow for a word of prayer. Once again, Lord, I come thanking you for blessing us like you have. Lord, not only have you blessed us by providing us a Savior who shed his blood so we could be a part of your family, but you've blessed us by giving us a church family where we can come and rejoice with one another and, and praise your name and, and share the joys and also the hurts as we go through this world. But God, we're asking you to bless us now. And as we go into the rest of this week and the Christmas season and, and almost all of us will be with family, Lord, bless that time. And may it be a time as we rejoice in your precious gifts. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.